I'm on the road. I'm heading from Adelaide in the south, back home to Darwin in the north, right up the guts along the Stewart Highway, the track. 3,000 kilometre stretch of road. Starts in Port Augusta, ends up in Darwin. It's gonna take me through some spectacular country and I'll stop off at a few places along the way and check them out. Got a few kilometres out of me, so I'll settle in. Here on the edge of Lake Hart, just near Wirraminna on the Stewart Highway in South Australia. Lake Hart here is an enormous salt lake, part of the Lake Eyre Basin. Lake Eyre Basin, 60 million years ago, was a tropical oasis. There was lots more trees, huge system of inland water. Over that 60 million years, now we're left with nothing but big, large, dry salt lakes. Lake Eyre Basin takes up just under a sixth of Australia's land mass. Just over 1,200,000 square kilometres. It's an enormous area. Lake Hart here, in the 1930s, was a really important salt mine. Salt, as far as the eye can see. There's salt here on Lake Hart. Prize for being some of the best quality natural salt anywhere in the country. I'm going to cook up a curry later on on the campfire. I might grab some of this for later. That should be plenty. the open mining town of Coober Pedy. We're going to head out the back of Coober Pedy to a spot called the Breakaways. It's a real hidden gem in the middle of the desert. We'll go check it out. Breakaways lay just over 30 kilometres north of Coober Pedy, and they get their name because they broke away from the Stewart's Range. Around 100 million years ago, this entire area was under an inland sea and when the sea level receded, weathering left us with what we see today. The Untakarinja and Matanjara people have lived here for tens of thousands of years and they call this spot Umuna. They use it as a main source of ochre colours and they see these structures as papa, two dogs sitting down, a brown one and a white one. Very important men's story. ready to pull off for the night. It's been a big day's driving. I've seen a lot of spectacular country along the way. I'm going to find somewhere in the bush to pull off, roll out the swag, cook up some tucker, have a good night's sleep. Plenty more to see tomorrow.
nothing better after a big long day's driving to sit back by a fire watch the sunset have a cup of tea cook some dinner and relax All right, we've got the billy on the boil. A nice curry in here cooking. Time to add that salt from Lake Hart. Grab some of this. Pump it up. Absolutely delicious. Car's packed, got a good cup of coffee, ready to hit the road on another day. Back on the Stewart Highway now, about to head into the Northern Territory. Cross over, head through Alice Springs. I'm gonna to try to make camp tonight in a place called Longreach Waterhole. There's a few things to stop off and check out along the way. Just pulled off the track to put some fuel in the car and I've noticed these, Acacia Kempiana, Witchetty Bush. I'm going to have a dig around and see if I can't pull up some witchetty grubs and have a feed. Show you how it's done. Now what I've noticed with this one is this stuff here. Grub dust. Really good indicator that there'll be grubs somewhere in the roots here. So what I have to do is find the lateral roots that come out here, dig them up and see if I can't find any witchetty grubs in them. Now it's taken some digging, but I've found the lateral root here. I've dug it up. Now it's time to crack it open and see if anything's inside. Ah, here we go. That's what I'm after. Pull him out there. Gotta be nice and gentle. There we go. Witchetty grub. Now you can eat these guys raw, but believe me, they're much better cooked. They taste something like scrambled eggs cooked in peanut oil. Not quite enough here for a feed, so I'm gonna have a dig around, see if I can't get a few more. One down, couple to go. Now, unfortunately, I ruined this guy when I dug him up, put the shovel through him. So to prove that you can eat them raw, here goes nothing. Throw the head away. Not bad. Creamy. A little bit of grit, but it's not too bad at all, really. For a raw, raw moth larvae, that'll pass. Now I've broken my shovel, but you can see in here, there's another one. It'll be nice and gentle here. Break him apart a little bit. See how they're eating out the dead wood on the inside of the lateral roots. Break that apart a bit. Gotta be real careful here. There we go. Now, let's grab a little stick. Break off the root here. Just really gently. his head out there, there we go. Now, look at that. What a ripper. That should be plenty for a feed. Time to cook up these widgety grubs. It's got a small fire here. I'll let this burn down to coals. Scrape away some of the hot stuff. Yeah. Put them on the hot, hot coals. They won't take long. Bury 
bury them with some more coals. Couple of minutes, we'll have a feed. Now these are looking pretty good. Scrape them out of the fire. It's going to be pretty hot. There you go. Ready to eat. All right, here we go. That is delicious. Not only are these delicious, pretty easy to get, they're incredibly good for you. Very high in good fats, protein. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. All right, I'm fueled and fed. Time to get back on the road. path of John McDowell Stewart, European explorer, notorious alcoholic, short, stocky Scottish fella. Back in 1862, he became the first European to travel all the way from the south to the north and return. By the time he got back, he wasn't in much of a state. His legs and arms were black with scurvy, his teeth were loose in his mouth, he was near blind. But he did it. He mapped the track. He mapped where all the water was, possible mineral leases, pastoral country, things like that. Ten years later, when it came time for Charles Todd to put in the Overland Telegraph line, he was the brains behind that. He followed the same route. He needed the water as well. Along the way he put repeater stations. The repeater stations needed to be serviced. The Afghan Camelliers would run up and down the track servicing the repeater stations. They eventually became the outback towns like Alice Springs and Tennant Creek further down. When motor cars took over, they followed the same track. Stewart Highway eventually connected Adelaide with Darwin, and in the old days it was just a single lane dirt track. Now it's a pretty good road. Still follows in John McDowell Stewart's track from Adelaide up to Darwin. Get a bit easier these days. stopped here at the Fink River. Now it's not much of a river today, but if you were standing here 350 million years ago, you might have witnessed some sea creatures taking their very first step onto land. At 350 million years old, this is one of the oldest river systems on the planet. And 350 million years ago, this was flowing into the Lake Eyre Basin. It doesn't flow much these days, only after really big rains, but very pretty spot. Reality because the movement of physicality is a lot. We've made it halfway here in the Alice. 1,500 kilometres down, another 1,500 kilometres to go. Behind me are the West McDonald Ranges, 550 million year old mountain ranges that overlook Alice Springs. 550 million years ago, these were bigger than the Himalayas, bigger than Mount Everest. Now they make a stunning backdrop to the Alice. I'm here at the Alice Springs Pioneer Cemetery. A couple of interesting characters are buried here. This tombstone here is Lassiter's last final resting place. Lassiter was an eccentric character who spent his lifetime, or later parts of his lifetime anyway, looking for what he claimed was the biggest gold reef in Australia's history. He never did find that reef and he died in the Peterman Ranges in 1931. It wasn't until 1957 that they found his grave and here he is now. 
walking through this old pioneer cemetery here in Alice, you can't help but think about the pioneers themselves and the hardships they must have faced settling in a place like Alice in the old days. There'd be some incredibly tough fellas buried here and they have a few stories to tell, I'm sure. Very isolated place. Here we go. This is what I've been looking for. This is the grave of Albert Namajira, Western Utterander tribesman, very famous artist. He painted a unique watercolour style that really captured the area around Hermansburg, just out of Alice Springs. He became really well known in his lifetime and he died in 1959, but his paintings still today are world renowned. An incredible artist and a, an amazing man in a point of Australia's history where things were just beginning to change. Back on the road. I'm just north of Alice now. The sun's not too far away from setting, so I'm gonna start thinking of making camp for the night. I might drive for another half hour and pull off somewhere, find a nice spot to camp. Didn't get quite as far as I would have liked today. That's alright. This spot's as good as any. The sun's just set. Time to get the swags off the roof, set up camp, light a fire. Relax for the night. Should be a nice clear sky. As you can see, I keep my camp pretty simple. Swag. Some water and a billy for boiling some tea. Camp oven. Chopping board that turns into a chair. Bit of tucker. And a fire for cooking and company. Don't need anything else. It's all I need. I woke up fresh from a great night's sleep. Just finding my way out of the mulga here back onto the highway. I'm gonna hit the road in another day. Just come across this fella here, bush lemongrass. Very closely related to the Asian lemongrass and has much the same flavour. I'm going to collect a bit of this, use him later. Check these out. It's definitely worth pulling off the highway for a quick stop here at Aileron, checking out these Utmajeri sculptures. This Utmajeri lady here, hunting a parenti with a little kid. And up on the hill, the Atmajeri man. He's 17 metres tall to the tip of the spear, and she's about as tall. Very impressive. Worth the stop. Now, I'm running a little short on tucker, but that's not a problem if you know where to look. It's called desert coconuts, bush coconuts. You find them on these desert bloodwoods. Latin name's Carimbia opaca, and they're scattered all through the bush just south of Tennant Creek here where I am now. Now inside, there's an insect, a parasitic insect larvae. These guys bore into the tree. As a result, the tree makes this gall. Now you can eat the insect larvae, but the pith inside here tastes a lot like coconut. And I'm gonna grind up some of it later and add it to a, a damper, make a bush coconut damper. I'll collect a few of these. All right. Grab this fella. Got some heavy termite bed here. Makes a good surface. Back of an axe. Give him a good hit. Gentle. There we go. Just gonna collect those pieces. I'll show you what's inside. Okay, so we've got our broken up bush coconut here. Now, this little sack in here this is that parasitic insect larvae. He doesn't keep too well, but you can eat him just as he is. Wet and gooey, but quite sweet. Not bad at all. What we're after though, is this pith inside. Put my knife here carefully. Scrape out that. Have a little taste. 
Tastes a lot like coconut. Scrape that out. I'm gonna scrape all this out. I'll add it to my damper later on. Have a look at these fellas here. These are bush figs. Very nice and ripe. I'm gonna collect a few of these. Put them in that damper with the coconut, bush coconut. Mm, very sweet. I can just see coming up ahead in the distance some pretty impressive granite formations. Local Aboriginal people call this spot Kalu Kalu. European explorers call them the Devil's Marbles. Might turn off and have a look. Devil's Marbles erupted out of the Earth's core 1,700 million years ago as a huge molten rock dome. Over that 1,700 million years, they've eroded by weather, wind, rain, small cracks formed. And now, with all that 1,700 million years of erosion, we're left with these enormous marble-like structures. The rest is covered by sediment. A remarkable process. Well, you see how they get the name Devil's Marbles? These huge rounded granite boulders eroded and weathered down do resemble giant marbles laid down by some mythical creature. about ready to pull off the track for the night. A little bit further ahead is a spot called Longreach Waterhole. One of my favourite campsites along the highway. It's about 20 minutes off the highway, right on the water. Beautiful spot. Territorians are known for their sense of humour. I reckon this is a great example. <laughs> the sign speaks for itself. Check this out, we've got some fire here. For people down south, this might look terrifying and dangerous, but fires burn a lot differently up here in the north. You'll see they're a lot slower, a lot cooler. We burn more regularly, we don't have the same fuel load. That being said, I'm gonna get out the way. Just found this black headed python on the track. Beautiful snakes. Unlike most pythons, these guys lack heat sensing pits because they eat cold blooded reptiles. They don't need them. This guy can even eat venomous snakes. Thank you, buddy. Now, I found him on the track. Not the best place to be for a, a snake. I'm going to move him off. Beautiful animal. How is this for frog diversity? In the space of one metre, you've got this little red-eyed tree frog. This little frog, not sure what he is. And this green tree frog. Beautiful little fella. Unbelievable. Now I mentioned before I was a bit short on tucker. Picked up a few things along the way, but I've got a plan. Now bear with me here. I used to be a chef before I was a tour guide. And I've traveled the world, particularly through Southeast Asia. Now in lots of parts of Asia, toad legs, really big on menus and a real delicacy and they're not bad eating either. Now up here in the Territory, we've got toads, but they're not meant to be here. These guys, cane toads. 
Now, most people are going to find this disgusting, but these guys are actually pretty good eating. If you know how to prepare them, the meat in the legs is delicious. And to my mind, if you can't beat them, eat them. Look at them. Just everywhere. These guys were introduced into northern Australia over 30 years ago, up in far north Queensland, to get rid of the cane beetle. Now, they didn't touch the cane beetle, but they spread right throughout northern Australia. Now, the problem with these guys is our native animals, our reptiles and our mammals, they don't know that these guys are poisonous, and they eat them. The toxins in their skin, they've got two big poison glands behind their head, they'll kill the animals. And they kill animals in their tens of thousands every year. They're one of our biggest environmental disasters. Now, it's not their fault, but I'm going to see if I can grab a few larger ones and have a feed. Look at the size of this fella. Just going to gently grab him here. Now, you can see, just behind his head, he's got those two big poison glands. Actually letting out some poison now. It's that milky white sap. He's got smaller poison glands all the way along his body. I've got to be careful when I take the legs off that I don't taint the meat. I definitely don't recommend doing this at home. You've got to know what you're doing. Now I've humanely killed these guys and cleaned them all up and this is what I'm left with. Now they might not look appealing to everyone, just imagine their little chicken wings. Very very tasty, believe me. So here are the ingredients for my Outback Toad Leg Noodle Dish. I've got some onion, ginger, chilli, garlic, a few leftover greens, noodles, that lemongrass I picked up earlier on, some teriyaki sauce, and of course, the toad legs. Should be good tucker. Right, I've heated up my camp oven now. Firstly, I'm going to just fry off these frog's legs quickly. Give them a quick fry. Alright, now I've got a bit of colour on the frog's legs. Add the onion. Chilli and ginger. Fry that off for a couple of minutes. Next I'm going to add that bush lemongrass. And the garlic. Give that a couple of minutes as well. Now I'll add those noodles. Good lug of the teriyaki sauce. Chili funny. Those frogs legs back in. Give it a good stir. Put the lid on, let it cook for a couple of minutes. It could be how it looks. Oh, that smells delicious. Looks pretty good. I'm just going to finish it off with these Asian greens. Give it a quick stir. And that is ready to serve. How's that? Let's finish it off. Good sprinkling of fried shallots. And there you have it. Cane toad legs. Bush style. Alright, now for the taste test. Here goes. That is absolutely delicious. Excuse me, I'm going to finish this. Now it's time to use those bush figs and coconuts I collected earlier. I'm going to make a bush damper. I've got the figs and the coconut in there. I've just mixed that up, added a bit of honey, made a fruit paste. Look at that there. Now, grab a good handful, maybe two, of this flour. Mix that around a little bit. 
some of that salt from Lake Hart earlier on. Just a little bit of salt. It's a dessert damper after all. A little shake of baking powder. Add that fruit paste. Then just a bit of water. Now damp is just a basic bush bread. Don't want too much water. Just a little bit. Start mixing that in gently. There's no yeast in it, so the baking powder, that'll make it rise. I'm gonna work that through for a while and I'll show you what I end up with. That's looking pretty good. You don't wanna work it too much. I reckon that's ready to go. Time to cook that damper. Let's put him in the hot earth there. Coals. You've got to make sure it's very well floured, otherwise all the coals will stick to the damper and you have gritty, gritty dessert. All right, that should take about 10-15 minutes. Moment of truth. Damper came out. Sounds pretty good. Perfect. Cup of tea. Bush fig and coconut damper. Perfect way to end the day. I survived the night. Those cane toads didn't finish me off. And what a place to wake up to. Longreach waterhole here, part of Lake Woods. Lake Woods is the largest temporary lake anywhere in the Territory. In the wet season it can cover over a thousand square kilometres and there's water everywhere at the moment. It's been a big wet. Never seen the lake this full. should reach Darwin today. Now I haven't had a proper wash since I left Adelaide so there's just one more stop I'm going to make before hitting Darwin and getting back into civilization. Needed that. Catch you next time.